Hi there, welcome to Talk Canny Cross. I'm Janetta George. And I'm Gail Walker. We're here today to talk all things Canny Cross, the fun way to get fit with your dog. So each month we'll be joined by a special guest or two. We're here from professionals, regular canny crossers, and also dog and human experts in their field. It will be real people and real stories. So we hope you'll join us, whether it's for training tips, dog talk, or just for fun and encouragement. This is Talk Canny Cross, brought to you by DogFit. And don't forget to hit subscribe and keep in touch with all things Canny Cross. Hello. So Jeanetta and I have been meaning to invite today's guest, Hannah Robinson, onto our podcast for quite some time now. Um, so between you and me, Hannah is my hero. Um, not only did she first, <laughs> not only did she first introduce me to Canny Cross, I won't say how many years ago now, but it was a long time. Um, but she has recently, more recently, helped me overcome some anxiety in the water because I've got into triathlons the last three years. So Hannah has been a lifesaver in, in many ways for me. Um, but yeah, Hannah's also a huge, huge dog lover um, with a big, big heart. Um, and so much so, she's actually adopted two tripod Vigila girls, Nula and Maple, from the wonderful charity Vigila Mentis. Um, and in fact, Hannah did drive all the way to Hungary, well, I think it was last year, um, to meet Maple and bring her home um, back to the UK. And we're going to hear all about both her girls in, in a moment. But for anyone who hasn't come across the term tripod, it basically refers to a dog that has three legs. Um, and that honestly doesn't stop them for canny crossing, which is part of the reason why we've got Hannah um, with us today. Um, and we're going to talk some more about that. But First of all, it's absolutely wonderful to have you with us today, Hannah, and, and so nice to see you. Thank you so much for giving up your time um, for us and to talk to everybody about your lovely girls. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I feel very honoured and a bit kind of, oh, I didn't want to do with all those nice things you just said. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it'll be absolutely fine. And we're really pleased to have you on this episode and um, to find out more about your dogs um, and canny crossing obviously I've known you for a number of years as well um, but for the people listening tell us a bit more about yourself and what dogs you have at the moment so about myself hmm. uh, <laughs> I'll tell you about the dogs first because that's easier yeah. I have three Hungarian Vigilers uh, all girls uh, all from Vigila Um my eldest is nearly 12 years old and I have, her name is Alba and then I have Nula who is four and Maple who is one um, I did have a lovely, lovely older Vizsla who I got from a puppy. She was kind of like my queen and she unfortunately died last year. We were absolutely heartbroken, um, but she was very fundamental in in when I brought home rescue dogs in kind of welcoming, welcoming them into the house, you know, open paws. Um, so she was a really, really key part of our family as well. Um, but those are my dogs. My dogs are a massive, huge, if not most of my life. I do have um, children as well, <laughs> but more pictures of my dogs on my phone. <laughs> a bit like that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and when did you first get into Canny Cross? So, oh my goodness, this goes way back to probably 2010, 2011. Um, long, long time ago. Um, yeah. So quite a few years now. And um, did you just find out about it? Well, or maybe online. Obviously, we weren't as online as we are today. But well, did you see people running? How was what? What was that very first run? How did you discover um, that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I turned up at a race called Brutal Brutal Ten. Still yep. a very popular race organizer who used to do run Cali Cross and sometimes still do. Um, and I was getting in the car but I just pulled into the car park and I was getting ready and I saw this lady in the back of the car getting this beautiful dog out of the back of the car and she had this long kind of Lara Croft plait and she kind of hooked this dog on and off she went and I was like what is she doing like what is this <laughs> I kind of stalked her a little bit up to the start line and off she raced and I didn't see her until after the run and that lovely lady later became my friend her name is Claire and she taught me everything. She just basically, oh. went, I went, what is this? How can I do it? And she went, right, you're going to meet me here. We're going to do this. And then we're going to eat chips. And I was like, great, let's do it. Yeah, so, eat chips as well. We've <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got a lot to thank Claire for, actually, haven't we? Because I know she set up the local group to me um, initially. And you know, that's how I sort of 
once I discovered Canning Cross to try to sign, try and some, you know, find some people to run with. But I mean, I remember you saying about your first run. Um, it's you know, it's always like a uh, passes down the line, doesn't it? Because I remember I was out. I'd, I'd seen somebody racing in a local race, a bit like you, it was a lady with two huskies and she'd gone and I remember asking her what it was. She said, it's called Canny Cross. And she said, you can find stuff online. And it was quite difficult back then. There wasn't really much information. And I left, parked it for a while. And then I remember I was in, on, on a, going for a walk and I was in the car park, our local woods. And I saw this group of people with loads of dogs, mostly visualers, because I mean, I didn't realise at the time it was because you were doing a training run for a race that was coming up in two weeks time so I'll come on to that as well and I was with my husband and a couple of our dogs and I remember I went over to the nearest person to ask and that was Tanya and Paul and they had their beautiful their gorgeous dog Hank and Tanya just said to me oh my god this is our first run go and ask her pointed to you so I went running over and said oh, I've seen this before I really want to do it and it's going to be great and I remember you said come along next week we're going to be doing another training session bring bring one of your dogs and we'll loan you some kit so I brought red our Ridgeback Doby Cross which now I laugh at because actually <laughs> she's probably the uh, when I ran her and it was amazing right so I had a brilliant run with her and um, I remember that feeling of just running with a group of dogs I felt like I was one of the dogs running in a pack I can't it's really hard to describe that feeling unless you've done it but it was the I came home that that after the run and said to my husband oh my god I'm going online I'm ordering some kit and it's absolutely amazing and Red's my dog I'm gonna run with her anyway Red is like Paul's, she used to she's old she's 13 and blind now but she in her prime pulled like a train and in the end I ended up asking my husband to run with her and I took one of our staffies because she was just so strong but what the best bit is after that training run I got the kit and the next weekend I did the race with you guys I entered the so my second ever canny cross run was a 10k race with red of all dogs yeah um, and I loved it and I haven't looked back since so that's why I said at the intro that you're my hero because you really introduced me to it and it's been the best thing I ever did so I want to thank you for that while we're you're very welcome um, yeah you, you it, like when we were starting it there was there was probably about you know when you came into it when I came into it and Claire was doing it, there was probably about six people on the start line and there used to be big crowds of people looking at us kind of going like what the hell are they doing <laughs> and yeah. we were like yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but um, it, it's it's yeah. so nice to because that you know the Canny Cross community is really generous and mm. you know part of the ethos behind Dogfit and why Gail and I set it up was to encourage people and give them confidence to yeah. do it because you've just got to have somebody saying you can do it. This is the way to go, and it just opens up a whole world that we never look back from. So. Yeah, you were obviously one of the pioneers in the Surrey area. <laughs> oh, God, no, no. I was just kind of one of the joiners on, very much. <laughs> I was yeah. But that, that race, there was that, the, the training run and the actual race was to raise money for Vigil wasn't it? It was, yeah. The yeah. yeah. Yeah, hence yeah. all the orange. I think we were all yes. decked out in orange. There was an, another incredible runner who used to run with her beautiful Viz, um, you, uh, Gemma. Um, mm -hmm. uh, she used to run with Chester. And there's another guy called Mike Hurst who runs yes. with the lovely, who used mm -hmm. to run with the lovely Rufus and neither of those beautiful dogs mm -hmm. are with us anymore. Mm -hmm. But I mean, again, like yourself, incredible runners, fantastic. I mean, the Vizzlers, the ginger dogs were really just in mass that day. It was fantastic. Yeah. We raised yeah. a lot of money. Which is um, the main thing, yeah. And those brutals, you mentioned the brutal races, I've done quite a few of those in my time and, and they were sometimes a bit crazy, like the start line with 50 dogs and people. It was just... Uh, yeah something, I mean it? it's a spectacle it was a spectacle <laughs> and also as you know it's not just about running it's about crossing canals and, mm. and rivers sometimes and going through bogs and I mean there's an yeah. immense amount of pictures of me carrying my dog or my dog going like what the hell <laughs> yeah, what are you what doing to me <laughs> what is this <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah it's just great it's a it's just a brilliant brilliant thing I mean we talked about visual mentors and rescue dogs yeah so I just want to sort of touch upon that because I've always had rescue dogs and I don't know about you, but they, they've they done as much for me as I've hopefully done for them in terms of just what they've given back. And Canny Cross, I think, cemented that in a, in a way. Because, again, it's really hard to explain to people unless you're really Canny Cross, but that it really helped bridge build that bond a lot quicker and a lot, I, I don't know. It was just running with, when I ran with first after Red, I was running with Sydney, um, who are loaned out to so many people. Um, including the brutal race director once, Dave, he borrowed him. 
um, and Ben Winston um, more recently. But I've found it's been not just a great way to bond, but for a dog that can't be let off the lead, might be a bit reactive or you, it hasn't got confidence. It's been a wonderful way to socialise them um, and still exercise them, burn off that excess energy and see them having such a great time. But I think it's a it's a wonderful sport for all dogs, you know, and rescue people who have got rescue dogs. I don't I think it's just really important to get across just how important yeah. canicleness is. And it's worth don't be put off basically, not to go and run a lot. Because my when Winston, who was reactive, he could run alongside other dogs in his canny cross harness and just not and be absolutely fine with them. Um so did you find the same thing with your girls basically? Absolutely. So my first two girls, uh, I think I remember my first ever race with them, with Roma, actually, my older girl. And we kind of start, we were at Hankey Common, which is one of my favourite places to go. Mm -hmm. And the gun went and we were like, we have got no idea what we are doing, but we're going to go for it anyway. And the gun went and we kind of went off and she was like, what do I do? And I was like, I don't know. What to do. <laughs> And she remains that canny cross dog for me. She mm. remained that girl by my side rather than out in front, or she would always have to have cuddles beforehand. And, you know, mm. and I remember us kind of doing really well at the end. Somehow we just kind of went, oh, okay, we're doing something now. And it was great. But I think just giving them that, you said about the bonding, you said mm. about, you know, dogs that are reactive. Alba, who, because I ended up racing both my girls together. So when we got Alba from Visionmentos, they used to race together which sounds nutty um but it worked and Alba's quite reactive and very very worried about other dogs but when she's working when she's running in a pack when she's running with dogs that she knew you know it it they're focused they're running they're they're working they're listening to you sometimes maybe not downhill <laughs> you know it just gives them this focus it makes them tired and not just because of the physical exercise more about them thinking because you're going left right you're telling them steady slow speed up dear god stop you know whatever you're shouting that dog is really really processing what you're asking of them and and what they're asking of you because you know they'll flick an ear and switch a tail when you're like something's going on up here you know, so that bond becomes completely unspoken. It's just yeah, yeah brilliant, brilliant. Uh, it, it is amazing. We've seen some real transformational things with people with reactive dogs yeah. that suddenly can do participate in something, and the, mm. it is that partnership and that bond that you just like no other feeling for it, um, which is amazing. But let's talk a little bit more about Nula, your your beautiful girl Nula, and what's her story and how does she adapt to life with you and your family? How's how, how did that all work through? So Nula is my middle girl. She's she's my four year old, and she came over through Vigilamentes Transport. So we met her at um, our local service station um, and swapped passports and things. And we were yeah. like, "Hi." Um, she was very and still is the most intelligent, full of energy, switched on dog I think I have ever ever met. I knew straight away. I had never had a three-legged dog before. I'd done tons of research. I'd phoned my vet. I'd phoned my local. Um, that was such a big step for you to, to. I mean, if you've never had one before, then agree, because obviously she was tripod before she came across. Yeah. Like how, do you know how she ended up like that? Was, was she in an accident or? So both of my girls were both born like that. Oh, okay. So yeah, they so walked on three legs. Yeah. She, she only ever oh, no, and, different. And, yeah. yeah now this is this is one thing i get quite a lot actually that they they never know any different and you're right they don't but they are never not without their challenges they mm. absolutely have challenges and pain and tightness mm. associated when they're growing mm. so there's a lot of challenges that they still have mm. even though they've been born that way yeah, yeah. um so Nula has, you know, we have to be very careful with the strength in sort of like what we affectionately call her nubbin. So where she has part of the leg, yeah. you know, we're monitoring pain because obviously dogs communicate that in a completely different way yes. to us going, oh man, you know, my shoulder mm -hmm. hurts a little bit today mm -hmm. or my leg hurts. And I really do think Canny Cross has really helped me with that because you know when your dog's in pain, you yeah. know when your dog is tired, you know when your dog's like hyper, you, you know these things, those tiny little subtle kind of things 
Mm. Uh, but yes, we went to pick her up. She adapted beautifully into the house almost straight away alongside my other two girls. Albert wasn't a fan initially. <laughs> Albert takes a long time to warm up to everyone. Um, but yeah, she, she was just fantastic straight away. But we knew we had to be creative. We knew mm. that we would have to think about how we were going to exercise her, how we were going to work on her strength what diet we were going to give her, whether we were going to yeah. do something, all those kinds of things. And is it, it's her front leg, is it? It's, it's her front leg. Is it, is it the front leg. Yeah, so dogs are 60-40, obviously. So obviously it's better to have a leg missing at the back than it is at the front. So yeah. again, to be a little bit more mindful. Um, but Vision Mentes are such an incredible organisation and they were really supportive of me. And I went, look, you know, this is, I've not had a three-legged dog before. Mm. I'm going to go off and do my research and and then yeah she yeah. couldn't imagine our lives without her couldn't imagine my life without any of them i was gonna say oh. she, because maple as well is tripod isn't she and she's the, the the um the one that you drove to hungary to go and collect yes so she so, she probably thinks she's been kidnapped we think <laughs> <laughs> that we just drove there and took her in the night um, <laughs> wonderful wonderful yeah. foster. Mm -hmm. and that that's Another thing to say, Vigilamentes has incredible fosters within their organisation mm -hmm. who, without them, you know, it just just wouldn't work. Um, and Maple came from a lovely woman called Joffy, who is just an incredible foster. And yeah, so we drove to get her. And she is also um, has been born without the front limb, but it's the opposite leg. So okay. yeah, you possibly tie them together and make them do a race, and I'm sure they'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh bless on each other. They need <laughs> time like that oh, in the garden. Oh, they know. How did how did Nula take to her then, little Maple, when she turned up? Just love at first sight. They are thick as thieves when they go mm. out. In fact, when I was joking about the sort of like the yeah. together, because when they're running at you together, they look like they're kind of one of the same. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they they That's use sweet. each other, and I think those people that have run with their dogs as a two as a pair yeah. you'll know this on long distance you'll see them leaning to each other right, to yeah. direct or to rest wow. or to do all kinds of things like that so it's great yeah yeah so how did how did you first introduce them to canny cross what so maple's too little she's not she's not doing canny cross at the moment but yeah Nina, um obviously she came along when i still had both my older girls and they were still running at that point in fact they they ran way into their old age and every time I would go out with them and the harnesses would come out, Nula would be in the harness and get really excited. And there would be this heartbreaking moment where we would be oh. her. And it would be horrendous. Every time I'd be like, oh my God, I just can't do this. So on one of the runs, and before this, this is very important to note, I went to my vet, who is an incredible guy. And I just said, look, you know, because for him, this was new. In fact, a lot of the healthcare professionals that have come into conjunction with with my dogs it's like okay we haven't seen this before in you know yeah. um so I sort, sort of like said what if I started doing a little bit of running with her you know what do you think and he was just like go for it you know she's a good weight she's healthy let's just go and see how she and build up very slowly like you would do any yeah. other dog, and watch and listen to her and yeah well mm. first race we took her out sorry first run we took her out on didn't take her in harness, but she just was over the moon, over the moon. Oh. Her directions oh. were just, she was yeah. working, she was running with her yeah. sisters, she was just, so she took to it like a duck to water, literally. Oh. And when, when and in turn, you said about running her initially off harness, so when you ran her in harness, what yeah. do you have a, do you use a standard kind of cross harness or have you got one that's adapted for her? So we ran her at the at the race, obviously, where I saw you actually. Yes. So we ran her in a non-stop harness, mm -hmm. um, which is what her sisters are in. And it, it does, it, it obviously, as you know, with being harnessed people yourself, you will know about it being really important to support the dog's frame. Mm. One issue we do come up with, and we have kind of had to look at adapting our harness specifically for her, is that the nubbin comes yeah. quite easily. And yeah. you find that in other dogs that have had legs amputated for whatever reason, that that can be quite a battle kit getting something. So it does have to be sort of like very supportive, but yeah. also 
dependent on how that dog's running, what their biomechanics is like, that kind of thing. Yeah, and she's better in a longer harness rather than a shorter harness. I guess it's got that support, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because it kind of supports the spine as well. Yeah. I mean, that was amazing seeing you guys running. Because when from a distance, she looks runs like any other dog and then suddenly approaching and, yeah, absolutely I mean, amazing. Yeah, it was, that was an, an amazing day. We could not have predicted. We had worked, we had trained for that for a year. Oh, We'd gone to the vet. We'd said, right, we're thinking about doing a race. We're yeah. happy to get the first 100 metres, you know, and he was fantastic. You know, we, we're very on her diet and supplements anyway. She swims, she paddle boards. She's a bit of a kind of, a bit of a jack of all trades. She does all kinds of things. So we knew that she had the strength. Yeah. Um, built her up very very slowly we took her on a park run and and yeah that day we were like you know what if we get halfway you're like even that if we get around the corner brilliant and the moment she was there she was just so full of it and you know she just flew it was marvelous it was yeah i was gonna say what, what was she like at the start line because i mean she's just confused <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people here there's a ton of oh, they had us waiting for quite a while, if you remember, yeah. kind of, mm. which was great because they set you off in a real yeah, they set the end stages, which was good, but yeah. Um, but yeah, she was real confused, and then we kind of hopped over, and then that's when I became really confused because suddenly my three legged dog became this absolute ginger rocket, and we were flying. Oh, amazing. And you know, I've never had dogs that have pulled before. She is different. She is. <laughs> fantastic yeah. So, yeah it was joyous absolutely joyous I cried mm. all the way around I'm not gonna lie oh, I do remember getting that little video clip of you coming into the end and it was so lovely to see because you both looked so happy it was oh. just wonderful yeah yeah and just letting, and then, her, letting her do what she wanted to yeah. do she's always shown interest and that's the key for me yeah. Shown interest in what she's doing oh I want to do this rather than me going all right we're going to go run with you you know sorry Janetta I was going to say she's obviously got a good personality though that oh. she's quite in you know she's quite confident because and trusting of you you've obviously built that bond and um since you've yeah. had her yeah, yeah and, I, and it's interesting to note actually she has really really horrendous allergies horrendous allergies. like she's allergic oh. to life in general um, yeah. she goes actually got like allergic to nine types of trees and all this but actually the the running really helps keep her mind focused because it gives her quite a bit of anxiety so actually again this was something that we were really mindful of when we started running how that was gonna trans you know transfer and actually the moment we were running like a lot of reactive dogs like we've spoken about she was on point she was like this is what we're doing we're going this way I see a few other people are doing this so we're all good yeah, it's given them a job to do, isn't it? That's that's what they you can just see that that's that's what they're born to do. Um, and have you got other events planned then? Are you going to do another one with her? So we hope so. The one that we did, which which you were at, I thought was yeah. absolutely lovely. So nice, kind of busy but low key, very relaxed, very supportive. Uh, Annie Cross, and that's what you want. You want somewhere that is going to be respectful, like as in respecting the dogs and the people there together because not everybody likes dogs um I find that an alien concept but you know it was really lovely so there was human runners there there was dog runners there it was yeah it was just great so low-key stuff possibly towards the end of the year um at the moment we do a load of swimming and in the summer lots of paddle boarding because that's just great for her core yeah. so yeah, so we have got some more stuff planned, but that obviously, as you know, that tends to be more towards the winter time when it's a lot yeah. quicker because a tripod dog overheats a lot quicker because obviously they're putting a lot more energy. Um, so that's something we have to be mindful of. Then we're more winter runners than we are the summer right, runners. I see. I was so going to ask you about that actually because they, when you did the race, did it does it take longer then to recover? And do you have to, like you say, you give her supplements and does she need to have a massage and? You know, oh, you know. she gets it all. I'm like, <laughs> <It's> anyway, <laughs> our time at my house, we have like the shower going, and you know, <laughs> and rest days are actually 
having a having a tripod dog having any dog actually mm. those days are important mm. knowing you know what your dog's done and watching them and how they recovered and this was why it took so long for us to do it because it was right for us to monitor her how she was enjoying it whether she was recovering from it because we would have never taken her into a race if we didn't think she was fit enough and she had like a little two-week MOT before we went into the race and the vet was so excited it was really oh, lovely. Oh, so nice, so nice to hear. So does she, does she eat? Does she eat more then? Because if she's using more energy, so so, so yeah, not, not so much about eating more, but eating the right stuff. Right, so lots of fish oils, lots of things that really support joint health are absolutely key for her. Um, yeah. making sure that she's not heavy. So weight is a real massive thing for tripods. Mm -hmm. You need you actually need to keep them on the leaner side. Yeah. Um, so she kind of looked when we were running she looked quite ribby that day but actually that was her optimum weight okay. um, so she eats tons but not stuff that would really bulk her out or put on weight because that's mm -hmm. obviously going to put more pressure on yeah. the leg and she has like the most marble kind of fierce paw you know this tripod paw that kind of moves it over to the middle the central compartment like central, yeah. part, central compartment central part of their body <laughs> Yeah. Them. so yeah amazing oh. what they can do amazing so have you got plans for maple then to to get into canny cross you must have you can run with both of them together oh god you? can you imagine no they'd be do you know what running my older two girls they were just they loved they loved each other they were really supportive of each other running these two together would be like running the two naughtiest <laughs> They I mean, would be like a rocket. You'll be like a rocket, won't you? I mean, it's interesting what you said earlier that the other two dogs didn't pull because it isn't really always breed specific. I mean, obviously the hounds, you know, that that family, um, you know, the HPR breeds, they normally are natural pullers and they're endurance dogs. But but you can just get dogs that that will be absolute pullers and dogs that you know I've got I've got one of each I've got one that pulls and one that is quite happy to run by my side and she's had all the training in the world so yeah it, it'd be interesting to see what your your new one whether or not she'll be a puller as well then and we'll see you know I mean at the moment she's still very little she's just turned a year and she is very very different to Nula in that she it, it sounds so bizarre but she does what we call meerkat so she'll actually go back up onto her hind legs and stand yeah and stand oh. like a little human it's quite a bit like oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> and sometimes like today she did a couple of hops like that oh my gosh I really want to see that oh. I'll try and send you a video yeah, yeah. it's like okay is this going to be permanent are we going to be like what <laughs> <laughs> take it on a human form so yeah. you've got them down there somewhere then because you keep looking down i take it they're at your feet are they i've got maple at my feet at the moment yeah. she's fast asleep she's fast asleep she's oh. the one that we kidnapped from from hungry yeah. oh, <laughs> we drove all the way bless yeah. her um it, yeah. yeah it's funny when you said earlier about running the two of them is like oh my god what a daunting prospect i also remember <laughs> many years oh. ago and this this prompted us to do the video of running downhill. And I remember we went out for a run and you had, I don't know if you're running with both your girls, probably, I think you were, because you used to always run the two together. And you had the whole windmill arms. Do you remember going running downhill and you were like this? And I, and I always remember we did we did this video on on how not to run downhill. And that was where I got the inspiration. I said, you've got the well, different ways to run downhill, I should say. Yeah. And the windmill arms was one of them. And that's where I got that from. <laughs> But you, but you did, did train your team to run run well by your side, didn't you? Did. Yeah, it took, took me it took me about a year. This is the thing that people that don't do canny cross don't understand. They'll kind of go, "Oh, look, it's lovely that you're running with your dog," but actually, what what they don't see, and as as anyone that runs with their dog knows, it is so bonding. Yeah. It is something that you go out and you work on your left and your right and squirrels and, you know, all of those <laughs> weird moments where you just suddenly are going one way, one minute and one way the other. Yeah. And and actually, it takes time. It takes trust. It mm. takes them going at their own pace and enjoying what they're doing. And then when it comes together, oh, my Lord. So yeah. running downhill, I love to run in Wales. That's like my place. And, you know, we were going up and down mountains and giant hills and 
you know, cliff edges in some cases. I mean, Alba did nearly take me off one once. Um, but, you know, you have to have that that bond and that trust between you. Yeah. Um, and, and was that process when you, so I'm sure people listening to this, is probably, they're probably going, how did you do that? Because I know it was this miraculous change just from windmilling down the hills to actually having the two of them running beside you. So what steps did you take to so, train oh. Again, Hankley Common out towards Tilford area is like my my place. Um, and I used to go up really big sandy hills, which is great, right? Because if you're going to fall over, which is generally you, the dogs are like, what are you doing down there? <laughs> it's fine because you're on sand. So I would train on sand hills um, and we would practice running up and down and up and down. And yeah. we'd sit at the top and have a sandwich afterwards and, you know, just enjoy our day. But that that was it. It was kind of just with with a command of like w with me because that's what I I do with mine. It's like I would say that's their word. They know that they're not yeah. pulling. Yeah. So everybody's got different words, as you know. Um, yeah. I, I keep a few Hungarian words in my back pocket, specifically for Alba, who who genuinely did continue to want to speak Hungarian for a little while. Famous <laughs> Maple. Um, and obviously you have your set words um, and sometimes those set words become other words that we probably won't say on the podcast <laughs> um, because, you know, you, you suddenly find yourself careering now that many of us. Now. It's so much fun. Yeah. It's so much fun. And, yeah. and as Gail will know, and as you will know, I've, I've not only run with my dogs, I've run with other people's dogs. Um, and I've been lucky enough to run with a Doberman, a giant Doberman, the size of my desk, um, lovely twist, and a beautiful Bracco Italiano called mm. Rocco, who was oh, yes. just incredible. And he was like being pulled by a train. I screamed, and and Gail will know this video because it has been circulated many times. Um, oh my. <laughs> he did not know steady. He did not know downhill very slowly. He knew that his dad, who normally ran him, won all races. So he needed to be at the front. And I did not know this. <laughs> yeah. It was a fast day. Oh, it was a very, very fast day. It took me a long time to recover. Yeah. <laughs> I, I And I know you love that dog because they're a beautiful breed, aren't they? I do. But, I just yeah. love dogs. Just in general, any dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, but yeah, it's like uh, my a friend, Julia, I remember loaning out Red to her and... Um, she I remember the start of a brutal race. We've got a video clip. She's never run so fast in her life. It was like zero to 60 in about five seconds. And we're at the rest of the, the group, we're, the, the mass start, we're all already about 10 metres behind her. And I'm um, hysterical because I, I actually said, I'm not running with her. <laughs> she said, I'll take her on. But um, you've got to have the legs for it and the knees, I think, because it's fine. If you're, you know, if you if you're, you know, if you've got good knees, you can just hurtle down, even downhill, the dog pulling. But if you haven't, like me, it's really important to teach your dog some commands, definitely. Absolutely. And and that command teaching as well really helps with them working. Mm. So it will, it's not just about that physical activity, it's about working their brain. And they love that, you know, that left, that right, where are we going? We do, when we're yeah. training, we don't always take the same route um sometimes if we're doing a particular type of training run but we don't always take the same route because mm. a dog wants you know yeah. wants that variety and and for me I think like hands down quality of life is absolutely the top priority for mm. any any dog that I am lucky enough to have in yeah. my life that they're enjoying what they're doing and that they are living the best life they possibly can and if they enjoy Caddy Cross brilliant you yeah. know that's fantastic and I've been you know blessed to have dogs that really love being active I've got business for goodness sake I mean they're like springs um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know it, that's not to say that if your dog can't you know doesn't want, want to run in harness that they can't free run with you that they can't you know go out on on hikes with you if they're slower paced or you know mm -hmm. they're not interested in running you know it's it's about the quality of the dog's life and that they're enjoying what they're doing yeah, no. here, here. I mean, we're like Janetta mentioned earlier. In terms of how we promote the sport as well, we we say it's for anybody can do it. Even if you're canny trekking, you're hands free, you know, hands free walking, or whether you want to run a marathon, it's about being out with your dog and bonding and and you know spending that time together. And um and that's that's the one most wonderful thing about canny cross. There's something for everyone, isn't there? Um, 
there really is it doesn't have to be you don't have to be the fastest runner you don't have to be the best yeah. runner you can walk you can free run you can weighted walk you know i know people that are you know doing weighted hikes with their dogs it's just joyous it's a joyous activity that you can do with like your bestie yeah totally yeah, yeah. I need 10 dogs. I can't even <laughs> I'm going to have like loads and loads of them. Just on yeah. When you move to Wales, there you go. You can start. So um, you mentioned earlier about um, Nuala's very active, does other sports, because you're a swim coach, aren't you? One of many, many things that you do, <laughs> many, many skills. Um, but I guess, I guess it goes without saying that she was going to, you know, be a good swimmer if she's got a mum as a swim coach, you know, <laughs> but it's also good for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is something that we were really we were straight into actually and I had contacted a local organization called Greyfriars in Guildford yeah. way before we even went and picked Nula oh way before we mm -hmm. got Nula yeah and because it was really important for me to understand what we could do for her being that she was so little she was 15 weeks when we got her oh, and yeah. we wanted to be on it so we saw a physiotherapist almost immediately uh, we saw the vet obviously immediately and we got her into swimming and I met some amazing people there and a lady called Bex took Nula under her wing and she had weekly swimming lessons for quite a proportion of time and now she is an incredible swimmer she knows yeah. how to stabilize in the water and it really helps with rehab and recovery if we can't run so uh, and have you been swimming with her have you, have you... Yeah. yeah I love it I love um... it I know that's such a nice thing to do. Although having having done a brutal, Coco's a good swimmer, but suddenly she was not a good swimmer because she couldn't work out why I was in the water with her. What are you doing? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so, what are you doing in the slate? <laughs> so, but it was good fun. I mean, you've been amazing, Hannah. And I think for people listening that maybe are uh, considering a tripod dog, and um, hopefully this will encourage them, whether or not they can cross or not. But you know the amount of background work and and you know the rehab was work that you've done and the physiotherapy and everything and the swimming has been absolutely amazing and she leads a regular life and uh yeah that's it, that's it. quality of life all the way it's about the dog enjoying what they're doing and having the best life possible so and that's no different to any other dog you know yeah. That's amazing. And and just to finish up, because obviously we could talk all day, but um, for anyone that has got a tripod dog that maybe has been thinking about canny cross, but thinking absolutely it's, it, it's not something you can do, what, what would you say to them? I would say to them, don't rule it out. If your dog is showing interest, get in touch with people, do your research, get in touch with yourselves. Absolutely, if anyone wants to speak to me with regards to this. Oh, thank you. I'm sure to hand out my details. I will be happy to talk to anyone who's having a little bit because actually one of the issues that I had at the beginning was she's showing interest, but is it the right thing? Is it the right thing to run with a three-legged dog? Is mm -hmm. that being cruel? Is that wrong? So this for me, because we really do live with a lot of people's opinions when they see us out. Um, so oh. I was really kind of really mindful. Uh and actually that's when it came down to she's enjoying what she's doing she's safe to do it she's absolutely living her best life yeah. um so don't rule it out if your dog's showing interest do your research find your people people that are going to be supportive i had a wonderful woman who i met who did have a tripod uh Vizsla, an older one and she just said i let him do whatever made him happy and he had yeah. a marvelous life and I have literally, and I will continue to live by that mantra. It's about their quality of life. Enjoy what they do. It's don't rule it out. Yeah, that's amazing advice. And as you said, you you know, you consulted your vet. He was super supportive, and you've taken things slowly. So, oh, it's such a heartwarming um, yeah. story to hear. And obviously, we can't wait to see the the little one as well coming through. So we'll, yeah. we'll put some pictures up and and stuff as well. So. And I want to see her hopping as well, doing the tigger. In the, well, yeah. yeah, I'll send you a picture. It's, it's kind of freaky. <laughs> I'm just expecting her one day to just start walking on her back feet. And there is a dog like that, isn't there, that just yeah. walks on his back feet. Yeah. yeah. So I think we'll save that for the outtakes then. <laughs> a, little, a little montage. <laughs> oh, but honest, honestly, it's been lovely to have you. And thank you for your time. And um, good luck. But hopefully we'll see you at another, another yeah, race. Another event. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I hope yeah. so. Thank you so much, ladies. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank well. you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Talk Canny Cross. We really hope that you've enjoyed it. But don't forget to hit subscribe so we can keep you up to date and let you know when the next episode comes out. Happy Canny Crossing. Yeah.